The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, and thank you for joining me tonight on A Word from the Lord. We're here now live from Reedsville, North Carolina, and it is January 29th, 2015. We're glad that you joined us tonight. And so what we're going to be talking about, first of all, we want to, as always, give our uh, contact information. My phone number is 276-806-3641. And then coming in after Mark doing a little swapping out with James Oldfield, he'll be doing the show Sunday night, and next uh, Thursday I'll be doing the TV show here again, uh, Word from the Lord. And so, friends, after going through, I came in and heard most of Mark's broadcast, and we opened the phone lines, offer $1,000, and then Mark so generously offered my $1,000 extra. And so we offered this, and no denominational preacher has ever come up with that offer. No one has ever proven the Baptist denomination, the Methodists, or, you know, what have you. Now, that should be by now registering in the minds of some people that, hey, there should be something to that. And so we have the phone lines open for you. We're going to open up the phone lines later in the show once we get into it, into it a little bit. But what we're wanting to do, we always get to call or have people call into the show and discuss with us, ask us Bible questions on the spot, and we've got to be ready to go. We don't have a panel we don't screen our phone calls. Every bit of it is live. And we're discussing the Bible. We're trying to tell you the truth because you're not getting it from your preachers. And so while we are always taking the calls, tonight what we're wanting to do is make a call for consistency. We have got to have consistency. And in James chapter 1, verse 8, it says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, I know that we get fed up with it in politics, and we talk about how inconsistent people are. Well, they're just a hypocrite. They say one thing and do another. Well, here's what I don't get, friends. We vote a person into office, and we complain for four to eight years about how low down and sorry they are for lying to the American people, but we pay denominational preachers, and we don't care a bit when they lie to us. Why is that? That doesn't make one bit of sense to me. James 1.8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We have got to clear out the inconsistency. Why? Because it is killing us. It is killing the religious world, all the amount of inconsistencies. Just a simple thing is this. Atheists look at Christianity, and we teach, if you're somewhat respectful of the Word of God, you'll teach that homosexuality is wrong. Well, an atheist says, you practice the birth of Christ to be on December 25th, and the Bible doesn't say a thing about that. That's inconsistent. Why are we going to listen to you? The inconsistency is running rampant. Just, the other, just yesterday, I went door knocking in Martinsville, and I met a, named, a man named Dennis Williamson. Asked him where he went to church. He said, soul winners. That's where Willie Robinson and Jessica Robinson are, soul winners. Talking with him, I said, do you really think that they can speak in tongues? Yeah, I believe they can speak in tongues. I said, just like in Acts chapter 2, when they spoke about 16 different languages, they speak in tongues? He said, yeah. And I said, what language are they speaking? And then he said, no, nah, they, they don't speak in tongues. That's when I was headed this way down the street. I'm talking to him about the Bible, going to soul winners. That's going this way. When I'm coming back this way, he doesn't see me, but I see him on his phone, and he says, man, where the blank you at? Cussing into his phone. Now, when you go to soul winners, does it really make that big a difference if you walk down the road and scream profanity and your pastor is committing adultery against his wife and then gets to keep the Holy Spirit speaking tongues on Sundays and just keep rolling with it like it's nothing? Inconsistency. Inconsistency. And we see it, friends, but just the matter is we're not doing anything about it. We know we don't like it in politics and we've got to move away from it. So tonight, talking about inconsistency, we're going to touch the topic of the Mormon church has recently come out in somewhat supporting the LGBT community. And so we're going to look at that, look at some of the points, but also we're going to ask, I went today with Micah to talk to some of the denominational preachers in town, what they thought about the recent support of the LGBT community. We're going to look at some of the, what, some of the statements that they had to make. But we're going to start out with just some simple questions. If you came to me and you asked me these questions, it would be just some of the easiest questions you could ask me. I mean, we get asked some pretty tough questions, but these are so easy. Number one, homosexuals can go to heaven. True or false? Now, you answer these to yourself. According to the Bible, what the Bible teaches, homosexuals can go to heaven. True or false? Drunkards can go to heaven. And there are Christians 
or Christians are in every denomination, true or false. Now you think about whatever denomination you're in. If you're a Baptist and you believe that baptism is for or is supposed to be full immersion under water, is a Methodist who says you can sprinkle or pour onto an infant, are they, are they a Christian? If you're a Baptist and you don't believe in modern day miracles, are the Pentecostals who practice and claim they can speak in tongues and say they can raise the dead and do all sorts of miracles, are they Christians? Are Mormons Christians? Are Jehovah's Witnesses Christians? These are simple questions and we have to answer them with the Bible. This is where we're going to start getting into trouble, friends. If we're calling for Scripture and you start giving us your opinions, I don't give my opinion. I have no opinion. I simply have, basically, I have based on only what the Bible teaches. If God doesn't say it, then I can't abide by it. And just this afternoon, the, set, the second question we had here, drunkards, can they go to heaven? I asked a lady at the Catholic Church, the St. Joseph Catholic Church in Martinsville, Virginia, can drunkards go to heaven? She said, if you're just having a drink with your dinner, you're watching the ball game, you drink a beer, yes, you can go to heaven. But if you get drunk and you start to abuse somebody or you're actually damaging your own health, then it could become sin. I asked her, where are those qualifying statements to, be, to drink? Why are they in the Bible? Well, I don't know. Friends, they're not there. We cannot have opinions and just simple made-up things. I mean, it's fiction. We can't have that when we're discussing what the Bible is actually going to say in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. says, Knowing this first, that prophecy, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. That means, and the following verse, and we'll go ahead and look at it, 2 Peter chapter 1, when we're looking at the Bible, I cannot just simply take what you have to say, and the Bible was never, or God never intended for it to be that way. And the, verse 21, it says, For the prophecy came not in old time but by the will or old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We have not ever at one point in time had simple opinion of men, but God has always revealed the message and the message has been plain and simple. Galatians five nineteen says now the works of the man or flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Now friends, when we see all these, these things listed here, and we also know in 1 Corinthians, in verse 21, where it says drunkenness, our second question has already been answered. They cannot inherit the kingdom of God, and that's what the scriptures say. So we'd like for you to call in and answer these three questions for us tonight. Can a homosexual go to heaven? Can a drunkard go to heaven? And are Christians in every denomination? Now let's get into what's actually being said in the community now by the Mormon church. This is Apostle, one of the so-called 12 apostles, and he hasn't seen the resurrected Jesus Christ. He wasn't with him from the beginning of his ministry, but yet he still calls himself an apostle, D. Todd Christofferson. And he gave or spoke, one of the speakers at the press conference that was held the other day, where they're now coming out in somewhat support of LGBT community. Now what they're saying is, is that the LGBT community, lesbians, gays, bi's, and transgender, should not be discriminated in the, in the matters of housing or their job. And in them, they're basically bowing down and giving them these rights or giving them that chance that they should not be discriminated against. And they're saying, if we give them these rights, then basically we should get to keep our right to freedom of speech that we can tell them that their lifestyle is wrong. Now friends, we have that right already, the freedom of speech, to tell them what the Bible says without giving in weak need, giving in to their agenda. Well, we'll give you these rights if we get to keep what we already have. It does not work that way. And they know that it's still wrong. They've already said, well, our doctrine is not changing. We're just going to give in and give them some rights. Now notice what he says. When asked in an interview if the Utah-based faith would apologize for its harsh rhetoric of the past, LDTS Apostle D. Todd Christopherson said, the doctrines, values, beliefs, all related to this haven't changed and won't, but I think we can express things better. That's something I've never understood. When I read the Bible to somebody else and they tell me that I could do it in a better fashion, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, Paul writing and says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? 
Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. How can we say that in a better fashion? If you ask somebody, what does the Bible say about homosexuality, and I read this verse, how could I have said it in a nicer tone? In a more better way that would come across in a better fashion, that would make you more acceptable to give up your lifestyle to follow God? Well, I say we just be straightforward about it. But this man, a so-called apostle, says we could have expressed things better. Well, I just don't know how that's going to be. And so while he's saying this, we then asked individuals in the community, what do they have to say about it? What are we going to do when, basically, if the Mormons are starting to cave in to homosexuality, you know we're in bad shape. They're kind of just off on their own. Everybody knows Mormons have their own thing, a Second Testament or a New Testament, a new revelation to Joseph Smith. They've got an entire Bible that they offer you along with the Word of God. They have their own laws, own rules. They've had their own society in different time frames, and they're still basically what it says, Utah-based. They have all these different ideas, and we know how Mormons are. But if even if Mormons are getting to the point where they're saying, well, we've got to bow down a little bit to the homosexuals, we're in bad shape. So what are people saying in the community? Well, we've been presenting on the show lately what Jessica Griffith has to say about it, and we all know the position that Jessica Griffith takes, and so we'll just go ahead and show you what she has to say on the matter. Okay. That is one church in Danville that welcomed everybody. And I remember going there as a kid and now that welcomed interracial couples. And that was Bible Way Worldwide. Okay, Apostle that Campbell. Apostle mm -hmm. Campbell would welcome everybody. Mm -hmm. He didn't care about life. Well, at the time, it preached. was Bishop Tapper, Christ Temple because for he, me. Yeah, he, he <laughs> I want to give love, him the yeah. He preached love and understanding. Yeah. Well, and, and that's why I love that. Well, he Bishop experienced Campbell. the we still love Bishop Campbell. Campbell. I still love because he yeah. preached love I and understanding. I still love Apostle Campbell. Well, and he let me just make sure. Word. Let me just make sure. Now, we all know where Jessica Griffith stands. She doesn't have a problem with it. She's still, and he's basically this man, I don't know his name, but he is a, a homosexual, comes on with the Jessicas and talks about how, well, Apostle Campbell was open to interracial couples, therefore he's going to be in, open to homosexual couples. Tommy Bennett. Tommy Bennett is the man's name. And that is just insulting to interracial couples to say that we are a man and a woman and our skin color just happens to be different and then you take something that is absolutely unnatural as homosexuality and compare that to interracial couples. And they say, well, we love Apostle Campbell because he'll be open to it. We love him for that. That's where Jessica Griffith is. She's saying just because, I mean, I don't really understand why she claims to be a woman preacher and then just push the homosexual agenda on all of us to where she's supporting it. She's telling them, I can remember the show that they did where they said, you know, times are changing. That's life. You're a person. We're not arguing the fact that they're a person. We're just saying the Bible teaches they're in sin. And so looking at what the Mormons are saying, things could be expressed better. Well, this is the same people that years ago did not even allow black people to participate in their so-called worship services. This is a book called Mormon Doctrine by the Ap Apostle Bruce McConkie. And it says, In all past ages until recent times in the dispensation, the Lord did not offer the priesthood to Negroes. However, on June 1, 1978, in the Salt Lake Temple, in the presence of the First Presidency and the Council of the Twelve, President Spencer W. Kimball received a revelation from the Lord directing that the gospel and the priesthood should now go to all men without reference to race or color. This means that worthy males of all races can now receive the Melchizedek priesthood, perform ordinances, and hold positions of presidency and responsibility. It means that members of all races may now be married in the temple, although interracial marriages are discouraged by the brethren. Now this is the type of religion that the Mormon doctrine is. The book itself talks about black people receiving the curse of Cain. That's why their skin is dark. The Mormon doctrine is now coming out and saying, well, we'll be somewhat lenient to LGBT communities. You mean you're going to start bowing down just in the same way that you gave up on this? the way they gave up on their polygamy. I mean, in the, I believe it's in the late 1800s, they gave up on polygamy. But in Doctrines and Covenants 132, it's a command of God. And they just gave up on it. The same people here that say, well, and their term, Negroes, cannot participate 
and the services are now coming out, do you see the inconsistency? The same people who are now trying to basically give in to the homosexual agenda are the people who used to say that black people could not even be involved in a church service. Inconsistency. Even if they wanted to be abide, if they wanted to abide by the Bible, this man, T. Dodd uh, Christopherson, let's say he wanted to hold fast to the truth against homosexuality. You still practice that the Bible's insufficient, or you teach the Bible's insufficient. You say that we can have polygamy. Their book says that we can have multiple wives. And they say that Jesus Christ is the brother of Satan. They say that if we are married in a Mormon temple, when we die, we'll go on to an afterlife and be able to have celestial sex, reproduce a whole other earth, and then we ourselves will be God. How can they make a stand against homosexuality? They are so inconsistent and so unbiblical across the board. How is it that they can make a stand. Well, that's the same thing for Jessica Griffith. She is basically giving high fives to the homosexuals, giving them a boost in the public eye, trying to promote their agenda. And not only that, she goes out and she basically spends her time with drag queens. A woman preacher, someone who says that they love God, this person singing and dancing behind Jessica, that's a man dressed up like a woman, this person in green by Jessica, that's a man dressed as a woman with fake breasts. What in the world are we doing here? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And this is exactly where Jessica Griffith finds herself. She is in the situation of verse 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But guess what? She's not doing it in secret. This is on her Facebook let all the world know that I run around with drag queens. That is so inconsistent, and we wonder why people don't take the Bible seriously anymore. Why people look at it and say, well, it's just an old book with some rules that somebody made. It was written by a bunch of men, and we don't have to keep it anymore because the people who claim to be the religious leaders do nothing about it. They involve themselves in sin. Highly inconsistent, and it is killing us. We are trying to make a difference. We're trying to make a stand. Then we're having a battle with Jessica Griffith who says she loves God, who says she's a promoter of truth. She's a woman preacher. When Paul said that women are not to teach over men, neither usurp authority over them. And then she runs around with drag queens, those that are practicing homosexuality, those that are transgenders. But then that's not all she does, friends. You know, she might do that, but this is something else that she's involved in. Now, I don't know who these kids are that are with her, but notice the caption. If we could take that bottom slide away, Matt, so that we could read this. It says, Only a few of the youth of Shalom, Richmond, Virginia, but I love these young people and excited about being their YP, their youth pastor. I learned a lot from them. First worship service of the year was on fire. Youth pastor, Jessica Griffith, leading your young people. Y'all need to get her away from your young people because she's going to be encouraging them. If you are actually homosexual, telling little Timmy, if you think another boy's cute, don't. there's no reason to fight that. You're still a person. If you think that, I mean, we're basically feeding this into the people. She's a youth pastor, a woman preacher, and then the young people see her, I don't know if she's dancing or doing what with the drag queens. She is not helping those young people at all. Because young people have minds. We're not stupid. These young people, I mean, they're probably 13, 15. They, they see through her. You're going out with drag queens. You do everything else that you want to do. You're a woman preacher when the Bible says not to be. And then you're going to try to pastor us. Absolutely not. Height of inconsistency. Well, that's Jessica Griffith. So there are other people out there that we talk to. And there's other denominations besides what she might be. And so Mike and I, we, we continued. We kept trying to find people, trying to talk with them. And so then we decided, well, we'd ask Larry Luffman. He is the preacher at Freedom Baptist in Martinsville, Virginia. We've had somewhat of a back and forth with him before about whether or not Peter or Paul taught a different gospel. He never got in touch with us on that. He preached a couple sermons that were directed towards us, but he never actually called us, never called into the show, never discussed with us on, you know, any, any way publicly. We went and talked to him about it. But we went by at about 1 o'clock today to talk to him. Well, the woman that answered the door said, he must be involved in making a sermon or something like that. He can't come out. Well, okay, that's fine. I understand that he's busy. So we leave. At 3.44, I call back trying to get an answer. 
or trying to get some uh, discussion with him. And this is the response that I get. And this is going to be his take on what he thinks about the LGBT community getting support from the Mormon church. Hi, I'm trying to get in touch with uh, Larry Luthman. Is he available? Uh, this is Caleb Robertson. Okay, is he expecting your call? Uh, no, ma'am, he's not. Alright. Um, may I ask the nature? I mean, is it missionary or? Uh, no, I wouldn't call it missionary. It's a, a Bible question. Um, okay. Alright. Um, can I take a message and um, give it to him and have him call you back? Oh. He's tied up right now. Okay, well, what I'm calling about is I wanted to ask him a question about the recent press conference that the Mormon church held where they expressed that they were going to start supporting somewhat the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get his thought on homosexuals and their standing with God. Okay, and who are you with? I'm a member of the Church of Christ. Okay. All right, well, I'll give the message. Okay, thank you. Now that was at 3. I didn't get a call back today, and honestly, friends, I don't expect to get a call back from Larry Luffman. And the reason being is because Larry Luffman already teaches false doctrine on the plan of salvation. He says we're saved by grace alone. And in talking to him face to face, I said, can you show me one verse where it says we're saved by grace alone? He says, well, I could, you know, I've already used so many, I, I shouldn't have to. And I said, well, then just give me the one. Just give me one. He couldn't do it. And I, I'm just looking at him. Doesn't that just eat you up that you can't even prove your own doctrine? It's false. And when if he's teaching a false doctrine that's grace or salvation by grace alone, and then he also says that we couldn't lose our salvation, well, if you can't lose your salvation, then I don't have to stop being a homosexual if I'm a homosexual. See the inconsistency? He couldn't make a stand even if he wanted to, and he's not going to. Just like Jessica, Griff Jessica Griffith's not going to, Jessica Robinson isn't going to do it, Larry Luffman's not going to do it. Well, he represents Freedom Baptist in Martinsville, He's not going to answer for it. He hasn't answered anything that we've said yet, and he's not going to come out and say that either one, homosexuals can't go to heaven, or drunkards won't go to heaven, and I don't know what he would say about Christians being in every denomination. But we'll go ahead and put up our phone lines, and anybody that would like to call in and answer those questions, can a homosexual go to heaven? Can a drunkard go to heaven? Are there Christians in every denomination? Mr. Luffman could call in. He told Mike and I that he doesn't have TV, but somebody could let him know that we're discussing him and, and what he would have to say on the topic. Just go ahead and, and let him know about that. But then there's also something that I saw last night. The Baptist Press says that the Southern Baptist uh, I don't, dot com leaders lament Mormon stance on LGBT rights as naive and unhelpful. Now this group of Baptists, they say that it's a, a bad choice to go ahead and support LGBT. Now notice what a Baptist preacher, a Southern Baptist preacher comes on and he says. His name is Brian Reddy. I think Southern Baptists are misreading this. The statement released by the LDS Church spoke far more about protecting religious rights than it did about advocating for the LGBT. As far as more, uh, now Mormons being Christians, some are and some aren't. As a Baptist pastor who has spent over 30 years interacting with Mormons, I am convinced that some do know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, though, admittedly, many do not. Now, this is a Baptist admitting that Mormons who say Jesus Christ and Satan are brothers, he's saying, well, some of them are Christians. Absolutely not. No person in the Baptist church, Mormon church, Jehovah's Witness, any man-made denomination is a Christian. Why? Because in order to be a Christian, you cannot be in a denomination. Acts chapter 11 verse 26, notice what it says. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass when a, it uh, says a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught the people and the disciples were called Christians first. You have to be in that church to be a Christian. Good evening, you're on a word from the Lord. Good evening, this is Charles of Danville. Okay. How are you doing tonight? Uh, uh, why, why are we uh, picking on Jessica Griffin like that? Because she is at a, with other words, entertainers is what these people are called. They're mostly entertainers, these so-called drag queens. Okay. 
and they, they come all the way from where they are, come down here to put on a show. And she goes up there to, I mean, to, you know, in, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's not against the law or not nothing wrong with it. I mean, all it is is a show. So when Jessica These Griffith, people, when Jessica Griffith goes down to watch the show and it looked like she was dancing with them, you say that's okay? It's not against the law to dance in this country. Okay. And and to me, you know, these people ain't did. I mean, these uh, entertainers ain't did nothing to y'all or anybody. Just ain't did nothing to y'all or anything. Okay. He's a nice person. I'm he not ain't doubting done that. Nothing to nobody. Okay, so all that, but the, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Is it a sin to be a homosexual? Is it is it a sin to be a transgender? People are people. Now, People have not... to be who they are and what they are because you cannot judge nobody. Only God can judge. No, I can them. judge. Okay, so let's be more clear. Yes or no? A homosexual and a transgender are living in sin. Yes or no? That I do not judge. Okay, so the Bible says... Good night. You're, you're going? Are you leaving the show? Okay. Well, he called in. That's her supporter, Charles from Danville. And so he, you know, he's fine with her doing all that. Now, how do I release this, Mark? Okay. He called in, says it's not against the law. Well, you know, it, it is against God's law. And she is proclaiming to be a preacher. And when these individuals that are homosexuals and transgenders are breaking the law of God, she is supposed to reject them, to rebuke them. Instead, she goes along with it. Good evening, you're on a word from the Lord. Um, excuse me? You're on live. Um, you were saying that women on you were saying that women are not supposed to preach. Um, can you give scripture of that? Yes, ma'am. Can you read the screen for us? Are you watching on TV? Yes. Okay. Do you see the, the scriptures that I have put up here? Um, yes. Can you read those out loud for us? Let the women learn in silence with all let the women learn in silence with all suggestion. And the next one? But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to upsell authority. Authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now, what does that verse teach us? Can Jessica Griffith be a woman preacher or not? I think she can, because I'm a woman preacher. Okay, what's your name? My name is Wanda Lane. Wanda Lane. So your argument is, because I'm a woman preacher, despite these verses, she can be a woman preacher. Now, that argument goes... If God called you to preach, yeah, he said there's neither male nor female in Christ Jesus. Okay, and so when he's saying that, he's also saying there's neither Jew nor Greek, and he's talking about salvation. But let's stay here. Let's stay in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, 11 and 12. Find in these passages where you have right to be a woman preacher. Who, was Jesus saying that or was Paul saying it? Does it matter? Jesus gave authority to Paul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37, Paul said... No, but Paul said he, he didn't say God. Say that again. When you said, you know, you said Paul said, you didn't say, I know all scriptures come from God. Mm -hmm. Now, did Jesus not choose Paul to be a chosen vessel to deliver the gospel? Yeah, he did. Then why don't you accept this? You don't accept what? First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, where it says, How's she going to learn in silence if she don't speak on? How's she going to learn in silence? I mean, who's she going to learn from? Okay, and then that's... So you're just saying all men are supposed to be preachers. That's what God's Word says. What does God's Word say? All men, only men preachers. Now look at this verse. Well, ma'am, if a woman can't preach, what does that leave? Goats? If a woman can't preach, what does what? If a woman can't preach, what else is left to preach? Men. First Corinthians what do you mean what is left to preach? There's only two options, men oh, or women. Oh, you mean who is left? Right. Okay. So in First Corinthians chapter, you said, how are they going to learn? First okay, so, 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 so if women can't preach, 
then why does God give them his fill them up with his spirit? Okay, and so this is what we're saying. I'm going to answer something else before I move on. It says in 1 Corinthians 14, 34, Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to, to be under obedience, as also saith the Lord. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now look at verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But now, when he's saying that women cannot preach over men in the worship services, that's where 1 Corinthians 14 is taking place. He's talking about when they come together as the church. And he's saying that can't be done. Say your name for me one more time. Wanda Lane. Wanda. Paul says you cannot be a woman preacher, but Wanda Lane and Jessica Griffith say, oh yes, we can. Now where is your scripture that says you can do that? Because when he filled me with his spirit, he gave me the power to preach his word to all sinners. Okay, so you have the spirit to preach to all sinners. Do you have miraculous ability? If he filled me with his spirit, yes, I do. You can perform miracles. Through Christ Jesus, we can do all things. Okay, so in 2 Corinthians 12, when people were questioning the apostleship of Paul, he says, Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Can you come on live TV and do a miracle for us? What kind of miracle are you talking about? Well, in Acts chapter 3, Peter raised a man that had been lame for 40 years. Could you do that? We can't do nothing through, unless we got the Spirit of God. It's not... He said, well, already, shine shall you follow already them said that you have the Spirit. In, we in understand name, that. We should. You already told us you had the Spirit, so we understand it's not really you, it's God working through you. Can God, God working through you come on the TV, come on TV with us, and you perform a miracle? I'm not just going to perform a miracle if He don't give me somebody or lead me to somebody to do something for. So you're saying now that you have the power. He said, come on there and perform a miracle. Right. In Acts chapter 3, that's exactly what they did before all those people, and they gathered an audience with it. He came to the man who, was, who had been lame. Then Peter said... God led him to him. God, it doesn't say that God led him to him. It says they went up to the temple. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I, give thee, uh, such as I have I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Can you find a lame person and heal them by the power of God? If God tells me to, I believe so. I can't heal him, he can. We've already discussed Through that. Me. So you could raise somebody uh, from the dead. Through I could the, do what? You could do any of those things through the power of God. You should be able to, too. No, can you ma do it? I'm not claiming to have miraculous ability. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 said Are those things... Are you a things, saved preacher? I'm saved, yes, ma'am. Well, you should have power to... Do whatever the Spirit of God tells you to do. Okay, so show me in the Bible that says I should be able to have miraculous ability. See, we... show you you should have miraculous ability. Yeah, if I'm saved, you said I should be able to do these things too. Show me in the Bible. Don't what... you pray for people and believe that God heals them? I believe in providence. I pray that God be with those individuals that are sick, but I know that the time frame of Miraculous healing, laying hands on somebody, that's not... Oh, you don't believe in that? No, I don't. Not now. I believe it happened in the New Testament in the first century. But now, we have no need for that. Oh. So why don't we do this, uh, Miss Wanda? Why don't we arrange a time frame for us to get together and we'll bring somebody with us that's sick and you'll have a chance to heal them. How about that? No, I don't heal people. You just said you could if God worked through you. I, just right, if He worked through me, but you saying I can heal them now. Well, I mean, no, I can't. We're going to put it to the chance if God's working that day or not. I mean, you're starting to sound like First Kings with Elijah. If God is, if God is with you, if God's awake that day. Now, if God's with you and you're sent from God, you ought to be able to do this to prove what you're saying. So are we going to get? To, are you we, got me confused. I really don't understand what you're saying. Are I we mean, going to get to get together 
for you to attempt to perform a miracle and prove to me that you are a woman preacher. No, that you you like you just tempting God now. Oh no, uh, you ma'am. Tempting God like I can raise somebody from the dead, and nobody else can be raised. Once God take the breath out of them, can nobody be raised from the dead? These people were questioning Paul, saying he's not an apostle; he's a liar. And he said the signs of an apostle were worked among you in signs and mighty deeds. There's nothing right now about me testing God. I'm testing to see whether or not you're a false prophet. I'm not a false prophet. I didn't even get on that. I was just asking you, did you believe in women preach or did, should women be able to preach? And, and you done went to a whole another subject. And you said you're a woman preacher and you get to disobey the written words of God because God has filled you with the Spirit, therefore you get to do it. Now, if God truly filled you with the Spirit, then you should prove it. So I'm disobeying God by preaching. Absolutely. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Now, if you want to, basically, this okay. is what this is. First John four one, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. You absolutely need to be tested to see if you're telling the truth. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm hmm. So, are you going to get together with us and you do a miracle? No, I ain't gonna get together because I'm not gonna be. Tempting God. Okay, well, we've got another call. we got to move on, okay? We've got some more material. Okay. Thank you I for calling. I pray that they take you on off the air. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening. You're on Word from the Lord. Yeah, uh, I'd like to ask you a question, if I could, please. Okay. I believe I was listening to you a little bit earlier, and um, and uh, I, I believe I heard that uh, y'all believe that Mormons believe that Jesus Christ was the devil's brother. Yes, sir. Uh, could you please how, how could you could you please explain how that could be? Well, they would say that God, being Elohim, was once a man, and He became a God through basically the same process that anybody else would through celestial sex, and they said that He reproduced many different people, many different spirit children that would then come to Earth and inhabit flesh, and then, in the process of all of that, one of the children that He made was Satan, one of the children that he made was Jesus Christ. And so they're all basically related, all of these spirit babies that would come in and uh, where did you Where did you read that at? Uh, it's, well, I saw that in a film that was made called The God Makers. Do you know of that? Uh, no, I don't think I've ever heard of that, but uh, it, it seems like to me that you wouldn't want to, to even in, engage in watching anything like that if you did, if you don't believe anything like it, mm -hmm. and for somebody to put the fact in there, install that Satan is Jesus's brother, um, that's that's terrible. That's a form of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And if you blaspheme God, there is no forgiveness for blasphemy. Are you are you aware of that? Okay. No, I'm not saying that Satan is the brother of Jesus Christ. I'm saying the Mormons would say that. Well, it seems like you like repeating that. Well, and I know, I know, I know plenty of Mormons, and they don't believe that. Okay, so just because I repeat it, does that make me guilty of it if I'm exposing him? Well, you could answer that question for yourself. Okay, and so when Paul says in Romans chapter six, hold on, Daddy. No, no. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm through. Uh, yeah, because, uh, you know, I've watched y'all over the, the many, many, many years, and uh, 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 y'all absolutely, uh, and I told them, this, them this time after time there, you, that y'all absolutely hate Baptists, and if you hate, hate anybody, no sin will enter heaven, and hate is a sin. I don't hate them, sir. The fact that I get up here in my free time to come out here at 9.42 when I could be at home to teach the gospel because other people are lying, that's the absolute opposite of hate. I love lost souls and therefore I teach them the truth. But speaking the truth Well, it's the sort of like I look at things that this way. Truth and love may grow up in all things. I get some speaking time too, sir. Okay, just let me tell you this and I'll let you talk okay. all you want to. Uh, it seems like to me that uh, people will say things with their mouth that they don't hate people. Mm -hmm. But in your actions. If I hated them, would I have gone door knocking yesterday just to have discussion with people? Wouldn't I just let them uh, go to hell? Was that your intentions? I'm trying to save them. They're going to hell. You're trying to say they're going to hell? I'm trying to well, save them Well, I'm glad you think hell. God died and left you in charge. Do you have a good one? Okay, sir, thank you. Good evening. You're on a word from the Lord. Good evening, Caleb. 
Very Maybe. interesting call. The first lady who claimed to have the power of God, Holy Spirit, kept asking you what you thought. Why would she be concerned what you thought when she should be going to the Bible or she's getting direct knowledge from God? Right. The second gentleman has watched the program for many, 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 many years, and yet he didn't give any scripture for anything he said and doesn't believe in what you're teaching. Mm-hmm. So that's very interesting, but I'd like to ask a question of the lady who called. Could she give a verse or anywhere in the Bible where a woman conducted a miracle? Because I don't know of any. Mm-hmm. The apostles were all men, and anybody in the Old Testament who had the power to perform miracles, as far as I know, were all men. Mm-hmm. Well, I think one thing that she probably would try to use would be Philip's daughters that prophesied in the book of Acts. But even still, that was at Philip's house and not in the worship service as it's talking about in 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Timothy chapter 2. But she didn't give a, a, a scripture for why she thought she could even preach. She just simply said she could. Well, the other thing she said that when you brought up her prophesying, she said she didn't get into all that, but mm-hmm. she did talk about healing. And so the miracle of healing, I don't know if it was ever right. any woman who had anything to do with it. Well, I know that when the apostles were being tested and being called false apostles, I mean, we don't see any hesitation from them to prove that they had the truth and prove they were of God. So I wish people oh, would, true. would pay us the she same courtesy. What's that? I didn't hear the last part. I said you go off the air, and yet, uh, you know, why doesn't she just uh, strike you blind? That's true. Why didn't If she's inspired of God, why doesn't she come on and show us to be wrong so that we don't come back on the air? Well, thanks for the broadcast. I hope that gentleman has many, many, many more years to continue to watch so that maybe he'll pay attention to the scripture well, on the screen instead of someone's opinion. Thank hopefully you. so. Hopefully he will obey. Thanks for the call. Good evening, you're on a word from the Lord. Hello? Hello, you're on live. Uh, yes. Uh, I was listening I was listening to you I was listening to you on a tape on the radio. Mm-hmm. You said that a woman should keep silent in the church. Yes, ma'am. And ask the husband when they get home. Yes, ma'am. I need you to answer this for me. What if the woman don't have a husband? What if they don't have a husband? Then they would basically learn just like anybody else. Let's say the woman at the whale. Right now? The woman at the whale. Say that again? The woman at the whale that spoke to Christ, they were having a conversation. Anybody else? Or let's look at Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, you see that Paul is teaching uh, Lydia. I'm having to find the exact verse. Verse 14. We're not saying that you couldn't ask a man. And it says, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, that's Paul, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. The Bible's not saying that women can't engage in biblical discussion. I mean, we, after services, we all are around one another. During tent meetings, we're door knocking with each other. We're under the tent with each other and we talk about the Bible. The Bible's not saying that women can't ask questions or can't engage in discussion, but the Bible is saying that a woman cannot be placed in a place of authority over men that she is speaking to them, that she's teaching to them. Does that make more sense? Uh, No. I just don't get it. I mean, you still ain't asked my question why. I mean, what if the woman don't have a husband at home? Okay, and I said if they don't have a husband, they could talk to somebody else just like they did in Acts chapter 16. No, the Bible said, the Paul said, keep women, you women keep silent in the church. Right. You're in, supposed to ask your husband at home. Now, that's what we're saying. Keep silent in the church. When they're coming together as the church, when they're in the worship service, the women are not 
to teach over men, and it says if they were to learn anything, let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law, and if they will learn anything, let, their hus let them ask their husbands at home. There is a difference between the locations where it's saying we're meeting together as the church, when we're coming together as the body of Christ and we're there to worship God, women are not to be in a place of authority. But then when it says when they're outside of that realm, that area, when they're back at home, they're allowed to have that discussion. Now you're saying if they don't have a husband, we're saying you could talk to anybody. And I guess we lost that call. And so friends, we've only got 10 minutes left. And so what we're talking about and all of the inconsistency that there is, Larry Luffman didn't call me back, couldn't get a hold of him twice today, and we haven't been successful before. And this Baptist preacher is saying that he can just, you know, there's Mormons, uh, Christians in the Mormon church will also listen to this. Second, today, according to Charisma News, Danny Cortez is pastor of a small Southern Baptist church in the Los Angeles area, not far from the conservative Christian Biola University. Like the rest of the Southern Baptist Convention, he was assured from Scripture that God-ordained sexuality was reserved for the husband-wife relationship. But when his son came out as gay, he spent a full hour explaining to his church why his position had now changed, after a long season of reconsideration. According to Cortez, it was on a sunny day at the beach that he parted with his prior stance. Because his son came out to be a homosexual, this Southern Baptist preacher changed his position on what God already said. Friends, you can't do that. We can't just go about changing what the Bible says. And that's the danger and the, just the damage that we're doing to ourselves when we go about this position like we can just change everything. We, it doesn't matter what the Bible is saying. And so also, we see the inconsistency with the Catholic Church. We went and talked to those that are at St. Joseph Catholic Church today. And they call a man, Father Mark White, that's their preacher, and the Bible specifically says, call no man on this earth your father. Now that's not talking about your dad, your physical dad, but it's talking about in a religious sense where that title is reserved only for God the Father. Good evening, you're on uh, Word from the Lord. Hello? Hello, you're on live. Oh, is this Carolyn? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, say that again. I want to give the station my number. I want you to call me when you get off the air. Okay, that'll be fine. If uh, I'll just go ahead and let them take care of that, Matt. He wants to give the number, and I'll call him afterwards. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna give you. Uh, can you connect me to the station when you give him my number, and you can call me when you get off the air? Yes, yeah, someone's fixing to come on. He's gonna take care of you. Okay. All right. Thank well, thank you. you. And so, friends, we're driving at a point tonight that the inconsistency is killing us to the point that Larry Luffman, Jessica Griffith, these people couldn't make a stand even if they wanted to. And the reason why I did is Matthew chapter 7. Now, sir, I tried to put you on hold. Go ahead and call back in and we'll try to get you and uh, get your phone number. Individuals tell us all the time, judge not. You can't judge. Well, this is not what Matthew chapter 7 is saying. It is saying that we should not do or not practice hypocritical judging. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Denominations have a beam coming out of their eye a mile long to the point they couldn't even see sin anymore. You've got Larry Luffman saying grace only. Once saved, always saved. Jessica Griffith is a woman preacher and they couldn't stand against homosexuality if they wanted to because everybody can rush to their inconsistencies and show them to be hypocrites. Now, what's the driving point we're trying to make at? The driving point is, friends, not only is it just killing the religious, the religious world, all these denominations have no room to speak to anybody, and that in turn ruins our society to where we just go downhill, morally speaking. We're just constantly eroding in our moral life, and we come into situations like what Charles Rourke is trying to promote today. The movie Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie Brokeback Mountain and the movie Yellow. Fifty Shades of Grey is talking about illicit sex between a man and a woman that are not married that gets into very rough situations. And Brokeback Mountains of Homosexuals, the movie Yellow, is about incest. Now, I'm trying not to be too graphic, but this is just what we're coming to. Movies where we basically 
thrive and just lust for 90 minutes or 200 minutes or whatever, how long a movie is, and we just sit there and watch individuals participate in fornication. Now, would you go into somebody's bedroom and just stand and watch them engage in sex? Then why in the world are we advocating that we should go to the movie theater and watch this? I'll tell you why Charles Rourke does it. He runs a movie theater. He's trying to run business. That's all it is. But you would think people that claim to be godly would come out against this stuff and say, no, we do not have to have any part of that. Listen to what Charles said earlier on a show talking about all this, talking about Fifty Shades but of Grey. But the more you want to turn it, the more they want to see it. That's right. <laughs> I, I think the smart thing to do if you're a parent is to say, let's sit there and talk about this stuff. <laughs> I really, I really do. I, I, you know, you know, my parents really never did sit down and give me the real talk, and and I regret that. I, I really do think that we should have sat down and had a, you know, a major Q and A. And now we had to blur the screen because in the background he's running an ad for a lingerie shop. And 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 explain what's going on here because I mean, the rumor in my neighborhood for years was you get pregnant from Santa Claus. Well, you know, that's where I think parents go wrong today. They lie to their children. And so what he just said is that 12 years old, the rumor was. Babies came from Santa Claus. Well, 12 years old, you're not going to be having sex. You don't need to know about those things. When you're trying to preserve the innocence of childhood, why in the world are we going to then throw in all of what the world is doing? Children don't need that. Now, he doesn't care. Like I said, it's just business. But this is the point where Jessica Robinson, even though she's an employee, needs to say for her religious beliefs that she's not going to participate in that. Why in the world is she not? Jessica Griffith, they don't take a stand for anything. And it's because they couldn't do it even if they wanted to because they are such hypocrites. Women preachers, husbands get to commit adultery and keep the Holy Ghost. That's why we're trying to fight against all this, friends. And Charles Rourke is saying, well, we need to educate the kids. They need to know the reality of the situation. Look, Fifty Shades of Grey, the reality, if we're going to teach our children about what happens in a marriage bedroom by Fifty Shades of Grey is going to turn out to be, well, Timmy, Here's what's going to happen. You're going to get to tie her down, spank her, put a gag in her mouth, and then all that's going to be your marriage. That is so unrealistic and so unhealthy. We don't need to teach children that. We need to come out and stand against it. But here's the sad thing, friends. We are promoting to stand against homosexuality, against false doctrine, and we are begging, begging individuals to stand with the truth. And here's what we've got. How in the world are we ever going to get to a better situation when individuals that are the religious leaders in the community are just as bad as the Hollywood movies? This movie, Fifty Shades of Grey, says that we should basically degrade women, objectify them, and not treat them with any kindness or respect. It's a movie filled with lust and all sorts of garbage that you don't need to think about. You wouldn't watch somebody have sex in a bedroom, but we'll go to a movie to it. Go see it in a movie. You wouldn't watch... Individuals engage in homosexual sex, but we'll go to a movie to, and see it. And then Jessica Griffith says, well, let's run around with the transgenders. The inconsistency is killing us. We've got to get away from it, and we're trying our best to promote the truth like the man called earlier. He asked me why I went door knocking, because people are going to hell. We want to save them. First John chapter 5, verse 19 and we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. When the world is producing things like Fifty Shades of Grey and the religious community doesn't stand up against it, we know the whole world lieth in sin or lieth in wickedness. Now here's the thing, friends. It is not just on Jessica Griffith. It's on every one of you. If you're in Jessica Griffith's church, Jessica Robinson's church, soul winners, and you're not pressing them to take a stand against this Hollywood filth, shame on you. Absolutely, shame on you. You're just as much a part of the problem as they are because you're not pressing them. Look, listen, this is the line. We're drawing it. We're not going to abide by these things. And you can help us fight against this. I sent this to people that I know. Larry Luffin's not going to stand for it either. He couldn't stand if he wanted to. But you can petition the film, Fifty Shades of Grey. And Charles Rourke says it's coming out on Valentine's Day. It'll be a, a great time to go see such a movie. It's not romantic. It's borderline rape. Who are you? You're not going to take your sweetheart to watch someone get raped. So say no to porn. Boycott Fifty Shades of Grey. You can go to Life Petitions and sign an online petition. Tell all of your friends to do it. Because if we don't start standing up, the Mormons that are giving in to the LGBT community, it's all going to become the, the normal. 
and we're going to become so desensitized, we will be exactly what Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 is talking about. When we are so dull, we can't distinguish right from wrong. We're getting that point already. And so, friends, what we're saying tonight, we don't want to single out anybody. I've had to repent. We have all had to make a change in our lives. Everyone has to do it, whether you're straight or you're a homosexual. You've got to obey God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, they all made the change. He gives the list of individuals that won't inherit the kingdom of God, and such were some of you, but ye were washed, and ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You can make a change. You can obey God, and God will save you. That is what we're trying to teach tonight, but you cannot do that in a man-made denomination because God did not establish them. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. The things that God has not planted, these man-made denominations are going to have their end in the last day, and it is not going to be good. And we're trying to help you avoid that. Tonight, we're thankful for you for joining us into this discussion. Thank you for all the phone calls and for the discussion that we had. Friends, nobody answered our three questions. Can a homosexual go to heaven? Can a drunkard go to heaven? And are there Christians in every denomination? Start asking your preacher these questions. Start asking him to make a stand for the truth so that we can all get rid of this filth that, that is just simply overwhelming us today. Thank you for joining us tonight and for all of your conversation with us. We pray that you always ask for what does the Bible say and you'll get a word from the Lord. Thank you. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership.